I first picked up a pair of Clark's Desert boots six years ago. And here they are, and they're still going. This trucker design has remained for far beyond that, and for good reason. It just works. I can't think of any item of clothing that I've ever owned that's given me as much value over its lifespan as these. Hence the production of this video, and funnily enough, it's the 70th anniversary of the creation of the Desert Boot this year as well. This particular pair is constructed of tan-coloured, American-produced Horween leather, which really is some of the best out there. This has lasted incredibly well, and it's aged beautifully too. As expected, because I've used the shoes, there, there is some uh, scuffs and light scratches across the surface. But overall, the natural creasing looks fantastic. One of the reasons that this boot looks so good and lasts so well is the simple construction. This is fundamentally just two sections of leather stitched together and then woven to the sole of the shoe. This not only makes the boot look sleek and classic, but it also makes it durable due to the lack of seams that could otherwise become compromised over time. Clarks make these boots in a variety of different leather types. Aside from the standard leather here, you've got the suede options and new book too. I opted for the regular leather because it tends to be a tad more durable, but more than anything, it just performs better in wet conditions like we often have here in the UK. The leather upper is sewn directly into the sole. The insole is made of soft leather with a small foamed patch at the heel to give extra comfort. Unfortunately, I don't get to use the extra comfort because I have to use my own insoles due to my skinny feet. In terms of overall water resistance, these are fine for short walks in the rain. I wouldn't recommend these for sustained hiking in waterlogged conditions though. The water eventually starts to seep in, so I reserve them for just day-to-day -day use. They do have some Gore-Tex versions of these, which are totally waterproof, but I'm yet to try those, so I can't really comment. The crepe sole goes along with that casual function. This flexible rubber is probably the most comfortable type of sole that you can get on a shoe. The elasticity results in more flexibility and more shock absorbance as well, so they're quite comfortable to walk in for extended durations. They're also much quieter than something like a leather sole or a rubber sole, standard rubber at least. I have found that the added thickness that you often get with this sole does increase the weight somewhat, so definitely bear that in mind. The smoother texture of this sole is quite unusual, you might not have worn something quite like this before. This does trap less dirt as you're walking, so for instance if you walked across a muddy field, you don't get the chunks of mud stuck in the bottom of your shoe. However, you do get the sort of darker overall tone uh, as these have been used outside. And while it grips well to regular paved areas, it's a bit of a nightmare in icy conditions. So if you live in Siberia, I'd probably recommend avoiding these unless you wanted a broken face. Nevertheless, the durability of these soles have surprised me. Before purchasing these, I read online that crepe soles eroded away super fast and that they were a lot less durable than regular rubber that you'd find on lots of other shoes. But at least in this case, these seem to have done the opposite. These have barely worn out whatsoever, which is amazing considering the amount of times I've wore these. I have seen and held some cheaper uh, desert boots from other brands out there. And some of those do have crepe which feels a bit different to this. This is quite nice and, and squidgy and soft, but some of those other off brands tend to have quite firm soles. They almost feel a little bit crumbly and maybe that's why other people haven't had such a good experience with crepe. But uh, from my experience, I, I love these soles. These leather laces that came fitted by default have performed excellently too. I'm not sure if these are only provided with the regular leather ones as opposed to like the suede for instance. But these ones in particular, they've lasted incredibly well. They look almost new. And I've got no doubts that these are going to last for many more years without splitting, which is great. I like these versus the Chelsea boots, which are slip-on because I can just pull these as tight as I need them to. With my skinny feet, that just helps them to stay on. And it also means you can get them to a nice, comfortable level. You get a lot less heel slippage with a chucker boot. The only downside with these laces in particular is that after a while they might come undone, let's say. If you're wearing these all day, they do start to loosen up a little bit. You might need to just tighten that knot up right towards the end of the day. But overall, I like them. In terms of comfort, I'd say comfort's pretty good. These have got a really nice soft lining and the leather as a whole is quite supple. I found that I really don't get many blisters with these compared to some of the other like higher boots that I've had before. One thing to note is that these desert boots do fit a little bit on the wider side. Now you can get like narrow fit versions of some of these desert boots, although they seem to be extremely rare. As such, I'd recommend 
if you've got sort of average to slimmer feet, maybe size down like half a size with these. Clarks are renowned for being quite large, but overall though, I've been really chuffed. The leather hasn't split anywhere, which is fantastic. And outside of lasting well, these look fantastic with loads of stuff. One of the reasons I went for this uh, camel tan color is because it just is so easy to pair things with. This goes so easily with leather belts, watch straps, any other accessories that you might have. They're also a bit more understated compared to some of the wacky colors that these boots come in. And that's what I wanted with these when you're spending a little bit more than like a cheaper end shoe. Uh, you want a shoe that you can use a lot. There are many copies of this design out there now. Almost every single shoe retailer has got some form of chuck a boot that's closely matched to the Clark's Desert boot. Unfortunately though, most of them, they just can't compete in, in terms of quality, at, at least at this price point. You can normally get the official ones for between about 70 pounds if you're lucky, up to somewhere about 110, 120 pounds. Off-brand ones that I've seen at similar price points to this, they just have inferior leather and a worse sole most of the time. There's no point in spending this much money for something that's just gonna disintegrate in a couple of weeks. I'd recommend looking on either Amazon or the Clark's Outlet if you're here in the UK because you can basically get the exact same desert boots as you'd find in the regular stores for just a cheaper price. I'll link both in the video description. When I worked for Clark's a few years ago, I definitely noticed during the time that I was there, a slow decrease in quality of a large portion of the shoes. It felt like they were building them at a lower cost to try and hit a lower price point so that they could make a better profit when it came to these seasonal sales and all that. Fortunately, most of the originals range, which includes these desert boots, seem to have remained unaffected by this, so you still can get quite a decent boot. And I really hope that that continues in the future because I'd hate to see them start really cutting corners on these noticeably moving forward. So do you own a pair of chucker boots that are currently in your rotation? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, I really wanna thank you for getting this channel over 100,000 subscribers. The plaque back there, super cool. It arrived quite fast, actually. I really appreciate your time and attention. I know I need to make more videos on this channel, but we can get a little bit of fashion burnout, let's say. Great news with the second channel. We also hit over 10K subs with that channel as well, which is mega. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.